it's that time of year again. We're going to be taking a look at the best fans for under $18 for 2025. I hope you'll join me on this inexpensive adventure because fan doesn't need to be cheap to be bad. It just means it'll be inexpensive. Inexpensive is good. All right, first is the case simulation test. 6, 9, 11, and 14.5 inches are the four data marks. Six inch beam, small form factor cases, as well as fans at the bottom of your computer case blowing up towards your GPU. Nine inch mark being your media center PCs, 11 inch being your standard mid towers, and the 14.5 being your truly large towers. And depending on what data point you're specifically looking at, is which fan is the best choice for you. So like the top end being the TLB12 Extreme being one of the best ones on here. Well, in truly large towers, the P14 Max is actually a better choice. So this is gonna have both 140s and 120 millimeter fans, as well as really any size fan that is in its price category. I'm gonna have a specific video series for the 120s and 140s coming up in a, well, a short little while. Then we'll move on to the 17.5 decibel reading for my noise normalized results. And these are how the fans rank once again, with the B12 Extreme being the top pick here for the 6, the 9, and the 11 inch marks. But when we hit larger towers, it is surpassed by the Air Penetrator 140i. Locking into specific RPMs, so at 800 RPM, the F14 is a top pick, followed by the TLB14, then the TLC14, and you can see how the different fans rank there. Moving up to 1500 RPM, the Air Penetrator 140i is a top pick. Uh, Tranquil 140 is in fourth place. What other notable notes on here? The TLS 12W is still towards the top, but has moved down several places in positioning. And then moving up to 2000 RPM fans, the Tough Fan 14, TLB 12 Extreme, TLE 12B Extreme, P14 Max, Pure Wings 3140, all top end picks of this best of the best series. And if you really need top end performance, 2500 RPM plus. Uh, for case fans, you usually don't need this kind of RPM, but just in case, the TLB12 Extreme, P14 Max, T P12 Max Dual Ball Bearing, P12 Max Fluid Dynamic Bearing. Meters per second versus a decibel reading of this best of the best fans. The top end is this square pattern. The TLS12W is the top pick, but it is, does have a limited RPM of 1,500 RPM, which should be sufficient for most computer builds for case airflow. But if you do require a little bit extra, the next choice for higher airflow would be the TLB12 Extreme. But if you're sticking at the, both the low and middle area, the purple here being the TLE12B Extreme is also a great pick. And if you're wondering, uh, meters per second versus zone, so it's just a different way of looking at noise data. It tends to compact and push together quieter noise levels, but it's still allowing to see airspeed differences. And as things get louder, they tend to separate more. So if you want to learn more about zone, I do have a full video about it on my channel. And relatively too new to my channel is thermal testing. Uh, I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about version three of my testing methodology, which is up and coming. Uh, at this point right now in, well, right now it's November, I'm starting my plans and uh, creating the necessary equipment for version three of my testing methodology, a noise isolating chamber, noise testing apparatuses to make improvements to my overall testing methodology because I tend to have a problem with uh, testing fans that spin in a clockwise manner for my current anemometer. And I'm trying to correct all of those uh, well problems with the testing methodology by upgrading everything and making it, well, a little bit less janky. So it's still homemade stuff, but it's 3D printed, so it should be a little bit more consistent than what I've been doing thus far. Um, unfortunately, right now I still haven't built up enough money uh, to purchase a test system for doing thermal testing in my case simulation test. Uh, so that's gonna have to wait for potentially version 3.1. I'm gonna get into this at the end of my video, but if you like the end result of what I'm trying to get at is if you like what I'm doing, like really like what I'm doing, what this channel is trying to do, please think about subscribing. Um, it goes a long way in helping support this channel and buying the fans, helping upgrade test equipment and everything like that, that make this channel possible. Um, and if you're not comfortable doing that, please hit that subscribe button. That does help this channel gain traction. Again, I'm going to talk more about this at the very end of the video in the conclusion section. So with thermal testing with these under $18 fans, the top pick here is the M25 uh, 120G2, and followed by the P14 Max. And these are all in the Liquid Freezer 3 AIO. Uh, and the CPU of choice here is the 11700K, locked in at 165 watt thermal load. 
but I'm not 100% happy with the way this testing is right now. So um, I feel that it has some errors in it, and I need to go back through many of the fans and retest them. At 17.5 decibel reading, the Jungle Leopard P1 is a top pick, followed by the M25 G2, P14 Max, uh, P14 ARGB, uh, M25 120 G2 is also a top pick. Reverse blade. And at 100% P-Dong fan signal, you can see the various fans once again, with the Jungle Leopard P1 being the absolute top pick, with the P14 Max being in second place, and the Tranquil 140 being in third. All great fans. Now, a data set that I do have a lot of is airspeed going through the cooler specifically. So, utilizing the data points of the 10.5 and 17.5 decibel readings, with the red and green respectively being them, the P14 Max is at the very best position, followed by the M25 G2, 120mm class size, the P12 Max white fluid dynamic varying, and the Jungle Leopard P1, all being the top end picks, but any of these would do quite well overall. Locking into specific RPMs, and this is the weighing factor for how the fans were ranked up against each other, the TLC-12 Reverse Blade is one of the top picks, with the Tranquil 140 being right behind it, Kaze Flex 140 being a little bit after that, and you can see the rest of them lying on there. Moving up to 1,500 RPM, you can see that many of the fans have very similar RPMs, or I should say air speeds. That is means that they all deliver very similar performance values, and these are how the fans rank up against each other, with the F5 R120 being the top pick, the P14 Max being next, and you can see how the other fans rank up there. Moving up to 2,000 RPM fans, there will be fewer options here, and the weighing factor is shifting more and more towards airspeed as opposed to noise. The P14 Max is the top pick, followed by the Tranquil 120, Kaze Flex 2 120, TLB12 Extreme are all the top picks here. And at the blistering speed of 2,500 RPM, the weighing factor right there, the P14 Max is the best, followed by the TLB12 Extreme, P14 Max Fluid Dynamic Bearing, and then the P12 Max Dual Ball Bearing. And at 100% P-Dong Fan Signal, this is just to let all the fans hit their maximum and directly compare maximums to maximums. You can see that P12 Max Fluid Dynamic Bearing is the top end pick, followed by the P14 Max, then the TLB12 Extreme, and then the P12 Max with the Dual Ball Bearing and the rest of the fans. Now, generally speaking, any fan that produces more than like 2.1, 2.2 meters per second of airflow going through a cooler, it's going to be more than sufficient for most of your thermal leads with any reasonable kind of cooler. Uh, even my 11700K with the U12A with two Nocto A12X from fives, which I think give about 2.2 meters per second of air, um, is able to kind of rail in like 250 watts. So, you kind of get the idea there about um, how much cooling you actually need. So it's nice looking at bigger numbers better, but uh, at some point when you're on a budget, you need to consider what do you actually need to, um, well, do the job. And then you have airspeed versus decibel reading going through the cooler. The top pick here, or the indicated top pick here on this graph is the P14 Max, followed by the green, which is the P12 uh, Max white fluid dynamic bearing. And you can see how they lie very close to each other. Same data, this time it's sewn. And it once again shows how tightly packed these fans truly are and how separated some of them do become, but they're still top end picks regardless. Now we're into value proposition. Now, this is kind of funny with this video because these are all value pick fans. So I consider anything under $18 a value pick fan. And value proposition here is uh, bang for the buck. So this is an actual performance. This is performance per dollar. So a fan that is really cheap is going to look excellent on these graphs. Uh, and it's relative to performance. So if it's cheap enough, even if it's performance scrap, it's going to look good on the graphs. So you can see how the different fans rank on here. I'm going to just move through it relatively quickly. And then through the coolers, noise normalized. What the top end picks here are. So some notable notes would be like the TLC-12C X28, where this is a triple pack of fans and it is a really good value, but it isn't a high-end pick, but it may be sufficient for the cool, your particular cooling needs, depending on what your uh, cooling device you're going to actually be using inside your computer case. So now there isn't really a real conclusion for this because the best fan for your money will vary based on somewhat on how you're going to use it in your computer case, whether you're putting it to a cooler or putting it in your case. So I hope you follow each section by section. What I do want to talk about is version 3 of my testing methodology. I'm trying to ramp everything up towards version 3 of testing. And like I said before, I want to build a test system, and I'm building testing apparatuses, and all this costs money, time, and effort. And if you really do like what I'm doing, like to see, like the effort, like the 
uh, fa amount of fans I've tested, the, the variety of tests that I put them through, I have around 2,000 subscribers. Like, you know, the funny way of putting it. Um, I'm not a huge channel, I understand that. If everybody became a YouTube member or pa Patreon at my lowest tier, which is $1 a month, I would be able to pay for all the upgrades that I want to do for this channel in that one month. Uh, even after like Patreon and YouTube all take their cuts out of that money. Uh, earning money through um, uh, the YouTube ads, it will build up over time. It just takes a lot longer to do so. So it means that I can't do all the upgrades and the testing that I want to do all at one time. So I have to do some of it piecemeal. And that means a version 3.1 of my testing methodology, which is fine. You know, there's it's not really that big of a deal for me. But, um, you know, I, I don't have sponsorships. This is all privately funded and that kind of thing. And I don't really have the money to just, you know, blow and, you know, buy just testing stuff. Um, there are some companies that are cool and they send me fans and that's what helps make this channel work. Um, so, you know, I understand that, you know, giving money to a random person, me making videos on the internet may not be your jazz or anything like that. And maybe you even don't like me talking about it. But uh, I make like 50 cents per video and each video takes me around three and a half to four hours to, from start to finish, publish, film, do testing, and as well as like doing the, the, the YouTube like analytic and inputting information stuff. So, you know, that's a lot of work for effectively 50 cents. Um, so it, this is a, a passion of, of love because I'm interested in computer fans. But, um, you know, subscribing to this channel, you know, that, that doesn't cost you money and telling friends about it, you know, talking about it on Reddit or whatever. I'm not going to toot my own horn and talk about it on Reddit, but if you guys do, just help it gain traction, I would appreciate it so much just for more visibility. Um, at that, I'm going to end the video. Thank you very much for making it this far in, in the, into the video and listen to me ramble about, you know, essentially finances, which is not fun. Um, I hope you come back and watch more of my videos and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.